quite a long reading for us today, uh, so I hope you're sitting comfortably uh, before I get started, and uh, I hope you're ready for just a, just a time to think about God, to think about the things of God in your lives. Uh, we're going to hear scripture, and then we're going to think, and we're going to pray. Ezekiel, chapter 34, from the Contemporary English Version. The Lord God said, Ezekiel, son of man, Israel's leaders are like shepherds taking care of my sheep, the people of Israel. But I want you to condemn these leaders and tell them. I, the Lord, say you shepherds of Israel are doomed. You take care of yourselves while ignoring my sheep. You drink their milk and use their wool to make your clothes. Then you butcher the best ones for food. But you don't take care of the flock. You have never protected the weak ones, or healed the sick ones, or bandaged those that get hurt. You let them wander off, and never look for those who get lost. You are cruel and mean to my sheep. They strayed in every direction, and because there was no shepherd to watch them, they were attacked and eaten by wild animals. So my sheep were scattered across the earth. They roamed on hills and mountains without anyone even bothering to look for them. Now listen to what I, the living Lord God, am saying to you shepherds. My sheep have been attacked and eaten by wild animals because you refused to watch them. You never went looking for the lost ones and you fed yourselves without feeding my sheep. So I, the Lord, will punish you. I will rescue my sheep from you and never let you be their shepherd again or butcher them for food. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord God then said, I will look for my sheep and take care of them myself. Just as a shepherd looks for his lost sheep, my sheep have been lost since that dark and miserable day when they were scattered throughout the nations. But I will rescue them and bring them back from the foreign nations where they now live. I will be their shepherd, uh, shepherd and will let them graze on Israel's mountains and in the valleys and fertile fields. They will be safe as they will feed on grassy meadows and green hills. I promise to take care of them and keep them safe, to look for those that are lost and to bring back the ones that wander off, to bandage those that are hurt and protect the ones that are weak. I will also slaughter those that are fat and strong, because I always do. The Lord God said to his sheep, the people of Israel, I will carefully watch each one of you to decide which ones are the strong sheep and which are weak. Some of you eat the greenest grass and then trample down what's left when you finish. Others drink clean water, then step in the water to make the rest of it muddy. That means my other sheep have nothing fit to eat or drink. So I, the Lord God, will separate you strong sheep from the weak. You strong ones have used your powerful horns to chase off those that are weak. But I will rescue them and no longer let them be mistreated. I will separate the good from the bad. After that, I will give you a shepherd from the family of my servant, King David. All of you, both strong and weak, will have the same shepherd. And he will take good care of you. He will be your leader and I will be your God. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord God said, The people of Israel are my sheep and I solemnly promise that they will live in peace. I will chase away every wild animal from the desert and the forest so my sheep will not be afraid. They will live around my holy mountain. And I will bless them by sending more than enough rain to make their trees produce fruit and their crops to grow. 
I will set them free from slavery and let them live safely in their own land. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Foreign nations will never again rob them and wild animals will no longer kill and eat them. They, have no, they will have nothing to fear. I will make their fields produce large amounts of crops, so they will never again go hungry or be laughed at by foreigners. Then everyone will know that I protect my people, Israel. I, the Lord, make this promise. They are my sheep. I am their God, and I take care of them. I find it really helpful uh, that the Bible uses such pictorial language. We have um, a rich history and unfortunately obviously, obviously it tends towards imagery that we might not use necessarily as much today. Um, I mean I don't even think that sheep are probably well they're not looked after here in the same way that they would have been looked after there. Certainly I don't think um, any UK shepherd has to fight off mountain lions or or anything like that wrestle them with their bare hands um so, so you know th there is a removal but the the understanding within biblical literature that actually people might understand a situation far better uh, when it is put um, in another way in a parable or um, in a metaphor in a simile, those things really help us uh, to understand. And that might not necessarily be because it is uh, too, the, the, too intellectual for us or that there's, there's some sort of learning uh, required uh, um, the other way, but because sometimes the way that we are operating, the way that society is operating, Mean, makes us blind to certain situations. So I think a really good example of this um, could be sort of during the Black, Live, Black Lives Matter movement, the All Lives Matter movement springing up alongside it. And um, they quite commonly use this imagery to explain why that was not the most helpful um, of slogans and reaction to Black Lives Matter by saying um, if your if a house is on fire you don't pour water on all the houses because all houses matter uh, you direct your water to the one that is on fire because it's on fire it's, it's in jeopardy um, and you know this was a great picture for potentially people who were struggling with why because i mean i think we can all agree all lives matter and why that might at that moment be unhelpful and and not and it actually diverting attention away from the, the problem itself so <clears throat> all these um these images and pictures and parables can be really really helpful and that doesn't make them less literally true um because it's allowing the understanding to happen. Obviously, you know, Israel aren't, they're not sheep. It's not saying that, that, that you know, God cares more about sheep than, than people. It's nothing like that, obviously. We, we all know that. That would be ridiculous. But it conveys more and beyond. And I really think that we need to appreciate that, that it helps us appreciate biblical literature. Um, because... We, we're quite hung up on whether things are literally true or whether they're meant to be metaphorical or all those sort of things. And and I think exploring all the ways that they can be helpful is the way forward for us. Um, and, you know, having lively discussion uh, with that in mind, if you have any uh, lively discussion um, to contribute, uh, feel free to get in touch, either a message to me personally or um, below on uh, YouTube. I love to hear what you think. Let's have a word of prayer. Mother God, who loves 
all her children equally, who sees their distress with a heavy heart. When we hear of the treatment of Israel and your lament, God, your heartfelt distress at the treatment they were suffering. We think too of our own situation, of the places and the people groups who suffer at this present moment. We pray that we would have ears to hear what you are saying to us in this moment, at this time. that we would be able to deduce what your purposes and plans are today. So Lord God, we pray for your wisdom. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us and give us strength and courage to step forward into the future. 